Hi, uh, my name is Dan Daly from Intel. It's my pleasure to introduce Sandra Locke from Etzbe Slorand University in Hungary, who will be presenting today on P4 on Raspberry Pi. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, in this presentation, I will introduce a new educational platform called PEPI for teaching P4 and computer networking. So PEPI is a P4 education working group project, so I, I have to note that. So teaching computer network is often challenging since it combines both theoretical and practical knowledge. The networking community is always looking for better ways to teach networks in, in the classroom. The introduction of programmable data planes in the P4 language have provided an exciting opportunity since students can gain hands-on experience with network protocols and algorithms by implementing them in the data plane. Hands-on experience is most important for increasing student engagement and improving their understanding. Unfortunately, existing software solutions like BMV2 and Mininet only partially support this goal. Students cannot build a network of their devices. These solutions do not provide real-world experience, and thus they are less exciting. If you look around uh, what hardware platforms are available nowadays, uh, we will face many difficulties that prevent their classroom usage. They have high costs. Some of them have closed sources. They require architecture-specific knowledge, and as their learning curve is long, or they are not available for a large number of users. Today, we can choose from a very limited list. So there are hardware switches uh, with P4 programmable ASICs, but they are far too expensive for most universities, even for research. NetFPGA is an open source hardware platform designed for rapid prototyping of network devices. It is less expensive than a programmable switch, but its price tag is still prohibitive for classroom usage. Furthermore, it requires FPGA design knowledge. Few SmartNICs with P4 programmability are also available in the market. Most of them have limitations on the P4 language and require knowledge on the applied MIHR architecture. Their price fits into a more reasonable range, but equipping a class of 20 computers with those cheap devices is still very expensive. Not mentioning that uh, students cannot bring these devices to their home to perform experiments there. So what is uh, the ideal platform for teaching? An ideal hardware platform should have a price tag similar to an academic book. It should be easy to learn and use. It should have worldwide availability in long-term support, open source hardware and software. And the platform should be delivered with a set of training resources and training materials. It should support both wireless and wired connectivity so that students could use their uh, own laptop to connect to them. But it can also be connected to other lab machines, so we also need the wired connection as well. Finally, high performance is not a requirement, but uh, it should have reasonable firmware performance for, let's say, home, home usage and home level. So considering all these aspects, uh, we propose a new platform called PEPI, which combines the open hardware of Raspberry Pi and the open source P4 compiler Tapas. We decided to use the latest Raspberry Pi model since uh, it is equipped with a quite strong quad, quad core processor. It has onboard Wi-Fi uh, connectivity and a one gig Ethernet port. It's widely available with a friendly price tag. Tapas uh, is a multi-target P4 transpiler. It was uh, designed to provide high packet processing performance and has support for multiple software backends, including DPTK. Currently, it uses uh, the V1 model architecture, but uh, it has partial support for PSA as well. However, Pepe wants to be more than a single hardware platform. It will contain training materials, including tutorial videos, presentations, and exercises, helping different universities to easily adapt PEPI in their teaching practice. 
Uh, we will set up uh, a puppy open repository, which will contain all the source codes, tools, and reference P4 programs. We will also have a wiki there. And one of our ultimate goal in the P4 Education World Group is to build a community, community run Peppy and transform it to a live educational effort with many contributors. As mentioned, we choose the latest Raspberry Pi single board computer. It is actually with a quad core ARM64 processor, uh, which is quite strong. And uh, we isolated two CPU cores, uh, and these cores are dedicated for packet processing purposes. And the non-isolated cores run the Raspbian operating system and the slow pass component of the tapas switch. For example, the P4 runtime server or co-located control plane applications can be deployed there. The Wi-Fi interface is set up in an access point mode, and it is bridged to the Tapas Fastpass. We also maintain a separate management network to access the Peppy node via SSH or connect uh, it to a remote control plane application through gRPC, for example. Uh, currently, we use Tapas with its DPDK backend with uh, the TuneTap uh, Pomo drivers. These are virtual uh, interfaces, actually. And this architecture has uh, an additional benefit. That uh, And the benefit is that the uh, P4 packet processing pipeline can be integrated and combined with existing networking tools, which are available in Linux. For example, we can set up the ACP daemons. We can use NAT with IP tables. We can use, uh, let's say, routing functionalities uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And we can combine all these network functions with uh, the P4 packet processing capabilities. So this feature can lead to lead us to incremental teaching. So for example, we can start with a simple P4 program and using these external tools to implement some network functions. And then uh, as we are moving forward, we can move more and more functions to the P4 pipeline from these external services and we can turn them off. So what about the performance? So we carried out initial measurements over the inbuilt Wi-Fi interface. And um, our setup consisted of a laptop and a Raspberry Pi. They were located approximately five meters from each other. And we used the iPerf3 to, to measure the uplink and downlink performance. On the uplink direction, uh, we can see approximately 45 megabit per sec, while on the downlink it's uh, about 50, 60 megabit per sec, which is not high. However, uh, we have to know that uh, it's, it's still enough for uh, classroom usage and for educational purposes. We also repeated these measurements without the tapas switch, and the result was basically the same. So our impression is that uh, that the performance is mainly limited by the wireless interface of the Raspberry Pi. So these this performance meets our initial assumption, and uh, since we don't target high uh, data rates uh, with this platform. So how we can use it uh, in the classroom? So we identify three possible options on how Peppy can be used uh, in the classroom. First, each student can work on their own device. Uh, for this setup, uh, we assume the students can use their laptops for both accessing Peppy nodes and generating test uh, traffic. In the second option, a group of students uses a single Peppy node. They can connect their laptops to the device and formulate a small network around it. Uh, this setup enables more complex testing scenarios since we can involve multiple laptops to generate uh, traffic and uh, receive uh, uh, traffic as well. In the third option, multiple Peppy nodes are connected, creating a small network in the lab. Uh, and a class of students can work together to make the network operable, for example. And, uh, but, but this setup also enables use cases where students' project needs to be interoperated uh, to implement, let's say, complex applications. To show the capabilities of uh, 
uh, Peppy, we created a brief uh, demo. The setup consists of a, a Peppy node and two laptops, a traffic generator we call tester and the control laptop running an SSA session to the Peppy node, which is called control. And uh, I have to note that the traffic generator and the SSA session can be executed from the same laptop. So a single laptop would be enough for this, uh, this demonstration. So after turning Peppy on, it creates a wireless hotspot and uh, we can simply connect to it. So currently we connect the tester laptop to the Peppy node. And we also run a DHCP daemon on the Peppy. Uh, so the laptop gets an IP address from it, you can see uh, here. Then uh, we will execute a simple calculator application that expects a P4CAC header encapsulated into an Ethernet frame. Uh, the P4CAC header carries two operands and an operator. And the P4 switch performs the calculation. Uh, it writes uh, the results into a result field and turns the packet back to the sender. Uh, we launch Tapas that compiles the P4 code first and then execute the generated switch program. Uh, we can see here, and the switch program creates two TAP interfaces, so two virtual interfaces, and that should be connected to the physical interface, so we have uh, additional scripts for that. Then our uh, P4 program is up and running on the Peppy node, then we can use the tester laptop to send test messages to it, uh, and uh, it can be seen on the left-hand side, we have a sender application, which uses uh, the SCAPI library to generate P4CAC messages. It's uh, sent over the Wi-Fi link to the uh, Peppy node. And in parallel, we run a TCP dump on the Peppy node to check the incoming and outgoing P4CAC messages. It can be seen on the uh, right-hand side. And we can see that the tester gets the replies with the appropriate results. Uh, you can see here that oh, we, we uh, got back the result that 32 plus 2 is 33. And uh, all the packets uh, were also captured by the TCP dump uh, on, the, on the Peppy node. Finally, uh, we run TAPAS in uh, verbose mode, uh, which enables us to uh, get detailed information about the packet processing steps. And here you can see uh, how TAPAS processes the P4CAC messages. Uh, you can see here that we parse the packets and uh, uh, we execute and apply a calculate table. Then we fill some fields and swap the uh, Ethernet addresses. So using Peppy, we can implement a wide range of use cases from simple application like this uh, P4Calc application uh, to, to more complex one like uh, network telemetry and in-network stream processing. Finally, we also can combine multiple devices forming a network of Peppy nodes where more complex collaborative use cases can be implemented in the classroom. Peppy is currently under development and will be released this summer. It was developed for networking education and uh, it is cheap, available and relies on both open hardware and software. Develop development is done by the P4 Education work, in, work Group. It also have an extra advantage uh, since it can make P4 available for hobbyists. So we can involve a new target group, let's say, uh, and they can use Papi to implement their home gateway or any crazy ideas in P4. So Papi will step out from behind the curtain at SIGCOM this year. Uh, we will organize a Papi hackathon there, which will include P4 and Papi tutorials. And there will be three hackathon tracks for participants with different background knowledge and interests. So there will be a track for educators who can use Papi uh, 
to practice with the platform and develop teaching materials. Uh, we are counting on contributors who can uh, take their own P4 program and port them to uh, the Peppy platform, or they can work on improving uh, our tools. And we are also we will also have a track for hackers uh, where we can explore new use cases or cool ideas with this uh, new platform. And what is also important that we will distribute a few dozen uh, Raspberry Pis among the registered participants in advance. So join us at SICCOM and uh, let's uh, do some experience with, with Peppy. So thank you and see you at the Peppy, Peppy Hackathon. Thank you, that was great. I, I really want to get one of these and, and start to play with it. Uh, uh, this looks like a really interesting uh, test bed to go and uh, uh, use P4 uh, in an experiment uh, to learn how P4 works. But then I can imagine these these Raspberry Pis being useful in in, in other places, um, the sensor networks, or uh, just trying to set up. A, uh, set up uh, another network uh, behind another P4 network that might be on a, a larger switch or might be on a, on a host. Uh, do you see the software environment that you have built being able to run on different types of hardware where you have this uh, um, the same programming environment that you have on Raspberry Pi? Do you see that being applicable to other types of platforms? Yeah, I, I guess it's, uh, it's possible because uh, we also did some experiments with uh, with uh, other single board computers equipped with, uh, uh, let's say, um, x86 processors. And uh, there are such uh, platforms in the market uh, which are equipped with, uh, let's say, network interface cards, which are supported by DPDK. So in those environments, we can also achieve much higher performance. However, the price tag is, is much higher as well. Yeah. So for educational purposes, I guess the uh, Raspberry Pi is a good platform because it's mm -hmm. available uh, worldwide and, uh, and the price tag is, is uh, reasonable. But uh, if you need uh, more, a more powerful environment or computer, then uh, you can use uh, basically the same uh, tools on 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 other single board computers as well. I see. So if I'm doing a, a research project, I'm building something out on Raspberry Pi. Uh, I could imagine sort of transplanting that to another platform that might be higher bandwidth or in a different form factor or whatnot. And all the same things that I learned on Raspberry Pi would be the same. Is that sort of the idea? Yeah, yeah. This is this is actually the the idea. However, first uh, and and at the current stage, we focus on on the Raspberry Pi platform. We want to explore more this new platform. So it's it's this brand new project actually, and uh, we believe that uh, uh, by summer we will release all the tools and uh, we can move forward with, with experiencing with, with other platforms as well. Great, great. Well, thank you. This is very exciting. And uh, I'm looking forward to SIGCOM. This looks really good. Okay, thank you.